You're listening to Pushing Back the Shadows. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode five of the Pushing Back the Shadows podcast. My name is Alex, Alex Davis, and I'm the founder and main author behind Pushing Back the Shadows. So today I wanted to start by asking you a question. When was the last time you stopped? When was the last time you stopped? Just take a moment and think about that for a second. Um, When was the last time that you stopped? So in this episode we're looking at a little bit of quietness. We're looking at pausing, taking that time... um, potentially even being a little bit selfish, but taking the time for ourselves, because it can be a very, very important thing to do. It's something that a lot of people struggle with, especially in today's technological society. It's not always very easy to practice that pause. Um, But as I say, we're going to have a look at uh, practicing the pause, some of the different ways that I, in particular, will practice um, just taking a moment for, for some quietness and some of the reasons behind doing so. So, with that thought in your head, possibly the last time that you you did practice that pause, that you did take some quietness, let's have a look at uh, some of the different things, some of the reasons why quietness can be so good. So, in today's society, it's very technological, as I've just mentioned, and you've got your Facebook, your Twitter, your texts, your emails, everything is coming through, and you're constantly getting bombarded. Uh, You've got the telly, you've got the radio, you've got everything just grabbing for your attention, and that is very much what it's all about at the moment, isn't it? It's um, trying to go bigger and better so you can grab more attention, get more focus, you know, advertise this product, advertise that product, Um, see the latest update, or I've got a question for you, please give me a response as soon as you can. And there's that very instant feel to it, very rushed feel. Um, A lot of messaging systems are known as instant messaging, like Messenger, like Snapchat, text message, that sort of thing. They're all instant. They will come through immediately. And that does lead um, to a certain pressure that we will feel that we have to reply, that we have to get back as soon as possible. And you see it a lot nowadays that people are constantly on their phones checking for messages, uh, checking for the latest Facebook or Twitter updates, and all things like this. And it's definitely something that I'm guilty of. I uploaded quite a few posts in the last couple of days to our our Facebook site. Um, Admittedly, it was a promotion, but it's still something... um, something that even those of us who are mindful of the need to be quiet, it's something that we can fall into as well. So I'm definitely not perfect at this, but it's something that I do endeavour to do. But why? What is the benefit of quietness? Again, you might have some thoughts on that. If you do have some thoughts, I would be um, quite eager to hear them uh, once you finish listening to the podcast. Drop us a message. Uh, whether that's on our email, on our Facebook, our Twitter, whatever, just drop us a thought or two or three um, as to why it's important to have those quiet times and maybe that you come up with something that I've missed. It's definitely a possibility. But for me, the whole point of taking that step back, the whole point of taking that moment of quietness is it's time to recharge When you're rushing from thing to thing, it's very easy for you to become drained. I know um, this is going back to the 16th of June. We launched our first Facebook Live video, and I spent the majority of the day on social media, just promoting it on the Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, I did numerous videos. I did numerous tweets. A um, couple of promotion videos before the actual Facebook Live video started. And it was a draining experience. It was very rewarding at the end because the interaction was great. And those of you who interacted, if you're listening, thank you ever so much for doing so. Um, I really do appreciate the interaction that we get. It's very encouraging to have. But in the build up to it, and afterwards, once everything stopped, it is a very, very tiring thing. 
so it gives you time to recharge recharge your batteries admittedly it's not all about sleeping because most people would recharge when they sleep speaking as somebody who suffers from insomnia it's not always about sleeping sometimes it's just simply being still being able to relax being able to do something that's not work that's not interaction that's just you something that's nice and calm and quiet and you as I said, you're not rushing from thing to thing, so it gives you time to process. Like I mentioned, uh, 16th of June, we did that Facebook Live video, taking that quiet time afterwards, you know, not worrying about social media or anything, um, as in not updating it every hour. It gave me the opportunity to sit and process. How did I find it? Was it good for me? Was it bad for me? Did it? have any other kind of effect what sort of feedback was I getting and okay that is leaning more on the work side of things but it was just shutting myself off not communicating with everybody not reaching out or anything like that just taking that time for me to process for me to work out how it had made me feel whether it was a good thing whether I should do it again Alternatively, there are other things that you would process, whether you've had specific events in the day, um, other things that you might think about, things that you've learned, things that you want to try. It gives you time to process those things. It's one thing that they say, um, that doctors always say about sleep, is in your brain, it's the chance when you sleep, it solidifies the memories, it, um, it imprints them. It's one thing we learned when I was doing linguistics at uh, university that when you're sleeping, everything that you're learning is being ingrained. So it's the time for the brain to process. And quiet time works in a similar way. When you're quiet, you have more chance to think about things, to analyse things, to process things. Not always a good thing if your brain has a tendency, as mine does, to put a negative skew on things. But then again, it does depend on what you're processing. But so really, quietness is all about having a well-needed break and it's very important to do so because otherwise as I mentioned earlier you'll be running from thing to thing whether it's jumping from Facebook to Twitter to meeting with friends to back to Facebook to Instagram to Snapchat and everything else jumping from thing to thing you will tire yourself out so it's important to practice that pause just to take that moment and to reflect and just take that time to do something for you. Now, it's something I've struggled with. I'm not very good at practicing that pause. I'm not always very good at taking those quiet times. But there are a few times when I do manage to, to do that. So I'd like to talk you through a couple of them. Um, just three or four of the things that I do just to make sure I get a bit of quiet time. Pushing back the shadows, fighting depression together. So how do you practice that pause? What do I do that helps me to unwind, to take that moment, to relax, to not jump from thing to thing? There are a couple of different ones that I want to mention to you. Some of them may work for you, some of them might not. You may have different methods. Um, which is absolutely fine. If you'd like to share them with me, drop me an email, drop me a message, um, leave a comment on our Facebook or our Twitter. Um, it would be really great to hear from you some of the other things. And you never know, some of the things you do might actually be able to help somebody else who, um, who may be struggling to find that time to take a moment to themselves. So one of the big drivers for me, one of the big... Um, things that I do when I need a moment's quiet is I listen to music. Now I've mentioned this um, a couple of times over the last couple of episodes of our podcast and I believe I mentioned it um, particularly in episode four. If I need some quiet time one of the first things I can do is just grab my iPod, plug myself in and off we go or even just on the computer on iTunes plug myself in and listen to music. Music for me is one of the big ways that I connect um, and can sit there and just 
tune out to everything else, focusing on, on the music, on the words, um, and just actually getting really, really into what I'm listening to. And I've got a lot of songs that I will turn to. Um, I do believe that I mentioned Breathe by Johnny Diaz and Tell Your Heart to Beat Again by Danny Goki in our episode of How to Hold On or Keeping uh, Keeping Going When Things Are Bad. But there are just a lot of songs out there that, um, that I connect to, that other people will connect to. Um, at some point I will be having a discussion with Cheryl, our editor, because she finds that music is also very, um, very beneficial, very therapeutic, and we'll just be having a chat about that to see which songs affect us, why they affect us, how they affect us, because they do affect us in different ways. So do stay tuned for that. That will be coming up later on in our podcast series. But music, as I say, is one of the big, big drivers for me. It's one of the things that I will turn to on my list. Um, it's a good opportunity to just unplug from everything else, plug myself into music, and let that do its work. Next on the list would have to be driving. Um, again, it's got music involved, but today I was driving back from seeing a friend, and I turned the radio off. I just sat there, and I listened to the noise of the cars, the noise of my car as it's on the road, and driving is just you, you're not looking at your phone, you're not engaging with people unless there's anybody else in the car, I mean admittedly you're concentrating, but you've got that time to yourself, and my car is very much, it's very much like a, a personal bubble of sorts, I can retreat into my car, and I can let the mask slip, I can have that quiet time, I can do and think, and just relax a little bit. Okay, the relaxation comes depending on what other drivers are on the road, um, but it's still a moment where I can just unplug myself from all of the, the hustle and bustle of technology and just take that moment to relax a little bit and not rush from thing to thing. It's... Um, it's particularly effective when I'm doing more long distance driving, but sometimes even just uh, popping 10 minutes up the road can have quite a good effect at taking some time to be quiet. So driving, music, and sometimes combining the two, listening to the music as I'm driving, they're two of the ones that I can really turn to. The third one that I wanted to mention was writing. I think I mentioned this in uh, episode four as well. Writing is a way of getting my thoughts out, so when all the thoughts are kind of cascading through my head, I can write them down, I can write how I'm feeling, but the other part of what I do is I write um, write novels, as I, I believe I mentioned last time. It's something that allows me to really just get into my characters' heads, pretend to be somebody completely different if I'm having a bad day, or I can just keep going doing, um, you know, just writing the rest of the story. And it's one of these, when you're writing, you can just shut everything else down, focus on what you're doing, and just write. Sometimes for me the content isn't, I'm not thinking very hard about it, it's just kind of, it's flowing, it's coming. So, something along those lines, writing, whether you journal, whether you blog, whether you write a book, or even poems, other sorts of things like that, is a time that you can be quiet, you can relax. For some people, other things that they would do is go for a walk, or maybe um, maybe you like canoeing, other kind of physical activities, like rock climbing, uh, if you know of any good locations near where you are for things like that. They, well, they can be quite um, physically draining, they can be very good for having that quiet time. Especially if you're doing it, um, doing some of these activities on your own, it's a good way of just being able to, to relax and do something for you. Because that really is the element of what it's all about. It's doing it for you, taking that time out to do something for yourself. And it may sound selfish, but it is a very important thing to do, just practicing that pause itself. So, why practicing the pause? I've mentioned about practicing the pause a few times, but what do I really mean by that? 
because there are a couple of different things that I would say are quite important when you practice the pause. It's not all about taking that quiet time. Sometimes it's about pausing before you react, before you say something. And I'd like to just take another couple of minutes to, to talk to you about that part of it as well, um, actually practicing that pause. Pushing back the shadows, fighting depression together. So what's the importance about practicing the pause? What do I actually mean by practicing the pause? It's not just about taking that, that quiet time so that you can recharge or stop rushing from thing to thing, although that is a big part of it for me, but one of the other parts of practicing the pause is stopping, taking a moment to think before, before you speak or before you react, something along those lines, because that can be a very important thing um, particularly dealing with people who struggle with depression or anxiety, practicing that pause can be a very, very important contributing factor to how they react to it. One thing that I would always say is when you're talking to somebody and they start to, um, particularly with depression and anxiety, they start to get a bit, um, a bit wound up or something that's out of character for them, take that moment and pause and think, well, hold on, it's out of character. They probably don't mean it the way it's coming across. It's happened with me quite a few times where I've been reacting in a certain way and it's not been something that that is normal for me. So it's really a very, as I say, a very important step in dealing with somebody with some kind of mental health issue. One of the examples that I can give you is where um, two people that I know, the one has depression and he was going in quite a downward spiral and his wife was getting quite frustrated with this because things weren't happening like they should and um, it was starting to drag her down and so they got to a point where she turned around and she snapped at him. That then made him feel worse, which then made her feel worse and it just led into that real downward spiral. And it's one of those things, particularly from my own experiences, it's where if you practice that pause, you take a moment and just assess what you're going to say, what your reaction's going to be like. It can avoid some of those moments. So it's a really good thing to practice that pause, not just so you can take time out for yourself, but also so you can think, hold on, is this really how they're intending it to come across? Now, one thing I always stress is that it's not an excuse. Sometimes their mental health condition does speak for them, like my depression does cause me to react in certain ways, but that is not an excuse. That's, um, call it more of a reason behind why it happens. It is something that we, um, when we're struggling, we do need to remember to try and moderate somewhat. I'm always quite conscious of how I'm reacting and I try to modify that so that it's not too not too harsh, not too um, frustrated or angry, even if that's how I'm feeling. But it does happen sometimes, it does break through, and particularly if it's out of character, it's something that you take or should try to take with a pinch of salt and just really take the moment to practice that pause. Other opportunities um, for practicing the pause, going off that same kind of theme behind it is when you go to give somebody advice. A lot of people when I sit there and say I'm struggling, I need some help, the first thing they do is come straight back with a piece of advice and then I'm sat there on the other end of the phone going well hold on a second I don't I, I don't need advice I, I'm needing this but I need you to stop giving me advice long enough for me to tell you. Uh, the example that I believe I mentioned um, in one of our recent episodes was where I was getting to a stage at one point where I needed to be pulled back out of the spiral. The way the spiral was going, I recognised the warning signs and I knew that I was going to end up um, going down the self-harm route again. So I phoned somebody up and they started giving me the encouragement side of things and it was one of those things where the encouragement 
would not have that effect. When I'm that far down in the spiral, the encouragement just serves to push me lower because for every piece of encouragement they were giving me, my brain was producing the yes, but, and turning it around. So I needed something something different. Another friend at that point came in and turned around and said, okay, tell me what you did yesterday. Complete change of topic, made me think about it, and believe it or not, it pulled me out of that spiral. But it was one of those things where if that first person had practiced that pause and they turned around and they said, okay, what can I do to help? I might have had an idea. To just clarify that for you ever so slightly, not everybody does know what you can do to help. And even with myself normally having a good idea, it doesn't always happen. I don't always know what you can do to help. But sometimes it is just worth pausing before you give your advice and asking the question, because sometimes they might surprise you. They might say, well, actually, no, this is what I need. I know I need this, so could you could you do this for me, please? Um, so really, practicing that pause is a very important part. It's something that we should do, not just for that reason, but also to get that quiet time for yourself. And especially um, if you are a friend or a family member, it's important to be a little selfish, to take that time and just work on yourself a little bit. Do something that you enjoy. Don't support somebody 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, because that will run you out. Um, it'll just wear you down until you've got no energy left. So, thinking before you speak, taking time for yourself, just find those opportunities, find those moments where you can pause. You can step back, maybe switch off your phone, switch off your tablet, your computer, and take some time away from the hustle and bustle of life, away from the busyness of social media and just do something that you enjoy that you can use to relax and believe me from speaking from experience it will do the world of good so that's all that i have to say on that for today i would as i mentioned earlier on be interested in hearing some of the different ways that you take a moment to relax some of the times that you have um those quiet times, some of the things where you can find those quiet moments, um, some of the things that help you recharge. So if you'd like, drop us a message on our Facebook or email me, and uh, I will be looking at some point to incorporate those into a blog post, if that's okay. If you don't want your suggestion incorporated anonymously, then please do let me know, and I can always leave your suggestion out. But hopefully I will hear from you guys. So I shall catch you next time. My name was Alex Davis. You have a good day, guys. You've been listening to Pushing Back the Shadows. To get more involved with us, visit us at pushingbacktheshadows.com and hit subscribe. Join us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Alex Davis PBTS or tweet us at Alex Davis PBTS. If you like what you've heard, help us bring you more great content by visiting pushingbacktheshadows.com forward slash support us to give you more ways for you to get involved.